What's up, everybody? I went to Fan Expo New Orleans recently and got to talk to a couple creators that are friends of the channel and uh, did a little brief interviews with them to bring you guys some new content and to uh, talk about these creators' books and get their voice out there. So stay tuned for all of that coming up in this video. <laughs> What's your name and what comics have you worked on? Hi, my name is uh, Jay Culligan. I'm with uh, Mess Comics. You can find out about Mess Comics at Mess Comics, M E S S E D, comics.com. Yo. My name is Anthony Stokes, Stokes the Writer. You know, obviously, had an amazing, had an amazing weekend. I don't have much left. I'm Andrea Lorenzo Molinari, and I'm uh, the co writer and co creator of the Shepherd uh, Supernatural Thriller series with Scout Comics. I'm also the editorial director for Scout Comics, which is the number seven publisher of comics in the United States. Uh, I'm Fabrice Sapolsky. I'm the co-founder and co-owner of Fair Square Comics, and we're the only family, immigrant, and minority-owned comic book publisher. Hey, I'm Pat Chan. I'm here at Fan Expo New Orleans. Um, I am a writer and the head of Speak the Free Entertainment. We have uh, some of our books here that we're showing off. Um, I, you know, I'm a big fan of New Orleans. I was first here for uh, Zenoscope VIP New Orleans. Happy to be back, kicking off 2024 with this amazing show. Uh, it's going to be a great year for us. 2023 was transformative. We did 16 Kickstarters this year. We're going to pretty much double that and keep the output going. The space between entertainment titles and our new imprint, Cheeky Comics, which is a bit more on the spicy side of things. Tell me a little bit more about one of your books that you've worked on or one of your favorite creations. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about my comic book. So, uh, Mest is the nickname for the Metropolitan Sewer District. Stars Lilliput. She's a sewer worker and she's our tour guide to the weird, wet, wild world beneath our feet. All she's got is a shovel and things like these uh, giant worms are trying to stop her from clearing out the tunnels. It is a book that's both fun and disgusting at the same time. We kind of call it uh, like, uh, if you ever seen the movie Tremors, it's kind of like Tremors meets uh, Tank Girl Hellboy kind of thing. Uh, I was inspired by my daughters to create a strong character that happens to be female, happens to be Asian. And so when I bring them with me to the comic book store, they get to see someone who looks like them on the shelves. Right here is Akka, pet rat, partner in slime. So uh, we're from the uh, Cincinnati area. Uh, the Inquirer's covered her several times, and uh, City Beat, City Beat called us the best reason to get your mind in the gutter. We got uh, about four seasons. We just started uh, season four, uh, chapter one, uh, called Sync, and uh, we're work I work with uh, Dylan Speak. He's our main artist, and uh, we're just going to keep producing books. Hope you can check it out at uh, Mess Comics, M E S S E D Comics dot com. And I'm the editorial director for Scout Comics, which is a publisher based in Fort Myers, Florida. I'm here today at Fan Expo NOLA, and I have the opportunity to tell you a little bit about Count Dante, which is, this is the first time I've had the pleasure of having this entire series on my table. It was my pleasure to edit the book. Uh, it was written by Clay Barber, and the artwork down the interiors is done uh, by Wes Watts. And uh, this particular cover here on cover A was actually done by Carrie Nord, who strategically is right across the aisle from us and very graciously signed the copies. Uh, this is about a man who actually existed in the 1970s uh, Chicago, started a number of Kung Fu dojos, and he's a very colorful figure claiming to be the deadliest man alive. Uh, he's known for putting ads uh, promoting Kung Fu classes in the uh, comics of the 1970s. And what I love about this book is that stylistically we've mimicked the Kung Fu books of the 1970s, like the Fists of Fury, the uh, Iron Fist books, the Shang-Chi books, that type of thing. Very proud of Count Dante and I can't recommend it more highly. So we have a lot of different books coming out. We published 17 graphic novels and comics in 2023. And we have a plan for 24 in 24. It's a little optimistic, but hopefully we can get there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, one of our latest uh, release is this book, What's in the Homes? A Scandal in Harlem, which is the second volume, second entry in the What's in the Homes saga. 
first one came out early 2023 so this one just came out and it's a continuation and an anthology style with great creators such as Brandon Easton, Dennis Calero, Greg Elise and Stephen Harris, Carl Ballers, Hannibal Taboo. It's really like the cream of the crop of black creators and also other type of creators. Um, and, it's, and it's really good. And it's a, a very important book for us because it fits into our imprint called Noir's the New Black. Noir's the New Black was the founding, the founding father of Fair Square Comics. It's the first book we published in uh, 2020. We did a Kickstarter. We raised nearly fifty thousand dollars back then, and we sold all editions combined over five thousand copies. And Noise and Black is currently sold out, but comes back January thirty first uh, in a brand new edition. Two brand new stories: one from uh, Chris Cross and Joe Illich, very cool, called The Winterfield, and another one by Victor Danrich and Jean Paul Bichon. And uh, we have a few books. We also have Little Rock Files, which spun off of Noise in the Black also. And it's from uh, Marcus Williams, Greg Burnham, and Queen McGowan. Uh, we also have a bunch of all ages titles, such as Breath of the Giant, which has been out for a minute, and Ultra Laser, which is currently sold out at every show. We bring it, and it's a success. Same as A Boy Named Rose, She's also sold out in stores. The only copies are with us. Um, and Beyond Tokyo Legends, which is a book that a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of retailers have slept on, uh, but is a fantastic um, rendition of Indonesian legends uh, made palatable by uh, Indonesian creators for the American market. It's been my pleasure to uh, edit uh, a number of our titles, uh, over 160 now since uh, 2020. Uh, we have a number of books ranging from fantasy to horror to sci-fi to political thrillers and crime. We also have uh, a couple of imprints. Uh, we have Scout, uh, Scoot imprint, uh, which is an all ages imprint. Uh, we have Chispa, I've got a couple representatives of that here, and that's a Latin X uh, imprint that has just started uh, in 2023. And then not yet uh, here on the shelves, we actually have a new imprint that we started called Scout Europe that focuses on new and up and coming European creators. We're very excited about that. You're gonna to start to see that rolled out in 20, here in 2024. And I'm telling you today about the intrusion. The intrusion are adolescent cockroaches looking for sweet graffiti spots. Uh, we have um, Patton here. Oh no, this is Patton, Horace, and Wrinkles the Sewer Worm. And uh, I tell the strip in uh, Sunday cartoon style. And I have some great taglines like, uh, what, if, uh, <laughs> what if a graffiti artist and a cartoonist got together, the intrusion is the hangover afterwards. So I tell it in a Sunday cartoon strip style, which I love. I, uh, Big fan of uh, Calvin and Hobbes by Berkeley Breed, or sorry, Calvin and Hobbes by Bill Waterston, uh, Opus by Berkeley Breed. So I really wanted to bring that style. Uh, they take place in the mess universe. Uh, Lily put and uh, Aka make an appearance in the intrusion, and it's just a good time. So I hope you can check it out. Uh, we can't not mention Intertwine, the last year's daughter of Kai Feng, which is the latest um, uh, in the Intertwine saga. Um, the book is currently sold out in stores. I still have a few copies that are traveling with me at conventions. Um, this book has been a fantastic journey. It's over 30 years uh, in development for me to nail the story right. It's And it's a spinoff to the original Intertwine graphic novel that has been around since, believe it or not, 2016. Uh, and uh, people are hungry for more and more Intertwine, so what we're going to do now that both Intertwines are sold out, we're creating a new edition with an extra story with additional bonus pages and a compact size version that's going to be 5.5 by 8.5, comes out late March, and it will be 280 pages for $24.99. I got my series Tapper Die. Number two is actually coming out 
January 18th, around somewhere around there. So yeah, it's been it's been a great show. Fun. All right, so here at the table at Fan Expo New Orleans, we have a selection of books. We have I Summon Cthulhu to Fund My Kickstarter number one. This kicks off the series. It's our first single issue series at Space Between. It is sort of like this is the end meets the comics industry. We have real life creators like myself, Stokes over there is in the book as well. And, um, <laughs> and uh, it follows creators as they pledge their souls to dark gods in exchange for success in the comics industry. This is an uh, issue one of three. Uh, we have Afterglow, which is a post-apocalyptic story about a girl and her giant radioactive cat. Destiny New York is my main title. It's been running since 2016. Five volumes so far. It's about a girl who had a prophecy made about her when she was young. She completes her destiny when she's just 13. Now she's entering her 30s trying to figure out life after destiny. Uh, Gangster Ask Barista is a spin-off. Biker gangster thrown out of her gang. It's a job at a coffee shop. But as customer interactions get worse and worse, the old habits act up. Uh, smoke weed to the future. A seer creates a strain of weed that allows people, when they smoke it, to see a glimpse of their own future. And finally, Little Girl is the story of a haunting from the ghost perspective. As she commits these grisly murders, she pieces together what happened to her that led to her becoming a vengeful spirit. And uh, that, that's what I got here. Uh, I have a lot more online. I'm at Pat Chan, and that's basically and pretty much everywhere. How are you enjoying Fan Expo New Orleans? Uh, we're coming to you from uh, Fan Expo New Orleans. It's our first time at the show, and uh, real fun show, real fun show. Very nice people, a lot of great flow, uh, a lot of people interested in comic books, which is great. And, uh, well, admittedly, loving the food. Uh, a lot of beignets, uh, got some great fried chicken, and uh, even the convention food has uh, uh, red beans and rice, and uh, okra, and, <laughs> oh my gosh, and the some of the best gumbo I've had. So yeah, thank you so much for your expo for having us. Thank you to Jay, Fabrice, Pat, Stokes, and Andrea for helping getting the channel kickstarted in 2024. I'm excited to get things rolling again and uh, we'll see you all soon.